Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Hobelo. And of course, welcome to the 2023 Philippine Social Entrepreneurship Summit. Isang adikain expanding horizons. May these two days be insightful for all of you. And please feel free to explore. Explore our virtual booths and get to meet new organizations. Join our talks and breakout sessions to gather new ideas and perspectives. To begin, let me introduce you to our hosts. Ms. Maan Sikam, Board Director of the Society for the Advancement of Professional Social Entrepreneurship, Social Entrepreneur, and President of Happy Helpers. She is joined by Mr. Rodmark Bariga, President of the Society for the Advancement of Professional Social Entrepreneurship for SAPSE, Social Entrepreneur, and CEO of Palamigan Co. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the 2023 Philippine Social Entrepreneurship Summit. Maraming maraming salamat sa mga nag-join sa ating today, and we hope that everyone is safe and well. This will be a very jam-packed two-day event. Maraming matututunan, maraming pwedeng makilala. We are all just one chat away. Feel free to type in the reactions and greetings at our Hubilo chat box. And let me welcome my partner for today. Hello, Rod Mark. Hello, man. And good afternoon to everyone. Uh, for everyone's information, we are in the main room, the main stage of Hubilo. Throughout the two-day summit, we will also have breakout rooms where other discussions will also take place. For today, our breakout room will open at 2 p.m. Since we are using the Hubilo platform, I would like to invite everyone to check out its different features. Hubilo is a great place to network as you can go to the profiles of all the participants, the mentors, the, the speakers. speakers, yes, and you can send each other messages. Also, Hubilo has a section for virtual booths where you can find more information about our different partner organizations. No, tama. Re really make use of this platform very well. And in yes. fact, uh, we will be able to use this platform even after the summit. Yes. So if you missed out anything, if you weren't able to start a session or you want to review a session, you can always log in, go back to Hubilo and uh, watch the recording. So yes. some people are asking, what is what is this summit? Ano nga bang mangyayari? from this two-day event. No? The 2023 Philippine Social Entrepreneurship Summit will highlight the organization of the National Social Enterprise Development Roadmaps Governance Council. So that's what we will be seeing this week and especially today through the collaborative efforts of various organizations from the different subsectors composing the country's social enterprise sector. For now, let us begin. Let us open the summit. No? For our first speaker today, Prefer Professor Francisco J. Bernardo III is the president and chairman of the Bayan family of foundations, namely Bayan Academy, Bayan Edge, Big and Search Foundation. His starting venture, JAD, has since grown to be a conglomerate of several strategically aligned outsourcing businesses in manufacturing, logistics, distribution, research and development, information technology, and human resources, where he sits chair. He also created Startup Village. Startup Village aims to be the one-stop incubator accelerator that enables startups to bring their unique ideas and business concept into reality. Prof. J. Bernardo also founded the Let's Go Foundation, a non-profit, non-stop organization that aims to support small and medium-scale entrepreneurs with the end view of pushing entrepreneurship to uplift the Philippine economy. He also engaged himself in the co-management of a television show entitled Entrepinoy, geared to inspire and educate more people on entrepreneurship, which won the Catholic Mass Media Awards 2004 Best Business Show. He is a director and professor of a Center of Entrepreneurship and Management Education, which has existing partnerships and conducts classes and programs with the Ateneo Graduate Business School. 
School of Business, sorry. He teaches and develops programs and courses, and he has been a guru and sought-after consultant of budding and existing entrepreneurs. Prof. J has investments to more than 20 companies of various industries such as food production, education, consulting services, technology services, and mobile applications, restaurants and bars, and recreations and tourism. As testament to Prof. J's passion for excellence, he was conferred numerous awards by both international and local organizations, including being one of the 2004 10 Outstanding Young Persons of the World by Junior Chamber International, 2003 10 Outstanding Young Men of the Philippines in the Field of Entrepreneurship by the Philippine JCs, and being the finalist of the Ernst & Young Entre Entrepreneur of the Year Philippines in 2011. So, to give his opening remarks, let us all welcome Professor Francisco J. Bernardo III, President and Chairman of the Bayan Family of Foundations. Good afternoon, Prof. J. Good afternoon. Maraming maraming salamat sa inyong dalawa. Uh, Pan and Rod Mark, uh, thank you again for doing this. Uh, I'm very glad and very happy to see a lot of people here today. It is with great pleasure that I am joining everybody here at the Second Philippine Social Entrepreneurship Summit. As our theme suggests, na isang adhika in expanding horizons. This has been the track by the, the Bayan Family of Foundations in collaboration with BPI Foundation. We're advocating for social entrepreneurship to be the forefront of the economy. Just a brief about Bayan Family of Foundations or hashtag BFF. We have four member foundations, so Bayan Academy, which provides education, Bayan Edge, which is into lending and micro business servicing, Bayan Search, which is more into research and uh, community development, and Bayan Innovation Group, who is the forefront of coming up with better technologies and the, the different coming up with different programs with relation to social enterprise. Our mission is synergizing and unifying impact services through holistic solutions for social enterprise. And in essence, BFF is an ecosystem of foundations that will uplift social enterprise and advance social impact projects. So, so we, we, we coined it BFF so that everybody is really not just, we're not just a merely a family of foundations, but we invite everybody to be part of our family so that we can bring um, social entrepreneurship and this country uh, up, upwards you know, to, to help our economy. Driven by this, it is rightful to join this path in developing and strengthening the social and the entrepreneurship ecosystem. Isang Adhikain, the creation of the National Social Enterprise Development Roadmap, is anchored on, it, on, on this purpose. The collaboration of various organizations from social entrepreneurship subsectors is a natural and true manifestation of the Filipino Bayanian spirit towards development of a sustainable model to carry, to, to carry on for us to accelerate and grow. Thus, in its second year, the summit will introduce and present to you the National Social Ent Entrepreneurship Development Roadmaps Governance Council. Um, again, isang adhikain, expanding horizons, the roadmap and the organization of the Governance Council is a testament in harnessing its full potential contribution to the social economy and its relation to the sustainable development goals. This endeavor truly focuses on continuation, expansion, and evolution of all the different subsectors co composing the country's social enterprise sector. The summit also features the accomplishment of BPI CNAG Challenge. Now, this was the program where it all started from educating, professionalizing, and capacitating, and democratizing social entrepreneurship. Now it has expanded and will enable all social enterprise stakeholders to move together as one ecosystem with a roadmap and a governance council in place. Um, I, at this point, I would like to express my deepest gratitude to, of course, BPI Foundation for their continued trust and support in offering the various programs and initiatives of, for social entrepreneurs. With a common, common desire of building, of nation building, to uplifting social enterprises and advancing social impact or, of organizations. Let me, let me acknowledge particularly um, Mr. Owen Camayo, the Executive Director of BPI Foundation, Owen, who has led this journey. We have uh, 
for the last couple of years. Together with us on this event as well is the unending support of our implementing partners and of course, all the organizations in the National Social Enterprise Development Roadmap Governance Council. Now, I don't want to be sounding too formal, but I would like to make you go through all activities and learn as much as possible all the things that you could learn and be as active as you can during the next couple of sessions. Maraming salamat. Thank you very much for everybody and have a good day to all of you. Maraming salamat, Prof. J, for that message. Um, taking from what you said, no, um, in any kind of development work, collaboration is key. And uh, we'd like to thank uh, Bayan Family of Foundations for taking the lead and, of course, DPI Foundation also. And uh, taking from that also, man, did you know there, there are more than 1,200 registered participants for this event yeah and as of now as we speak there are around 400 plus people watching us now um hindi naman kami ganun ka conscious ni rod mark no medyo sanay na rin kami but uh thank you very much once again for joining us today and as we mentioned earlier maraming marami tayong matututunan no marami marami tayong matututunan at makikilala in the next two days. And as, as, as Prof. J has mentioned, no, all of this, no, all of what we have been doing in the last uh, seven, eight years through BPI CNAG would not have been possible. This day would not have been really possible without BPI Foundation. So for our next speaker is Mr. Owen Camayo. He is the Vice President and Executive Director of BPI Foundation. He is a seasoned business communication practitioner with over 24 years of solid experience in corporate affairs, including media, influencer, stakeholder and government relations, executive and internal communication, crisis communication, advocacy, corporate social responsibility, and advertising acquired from leading global and local companies, representing both the client and as well as the agency side. He has also built a strong network of strategic partners and influencers from key media, government, non-profit organizations, and the athlete. So together of BPI Foundation. Good afternoon, Mr. Owen. Good afternoon, Mahan. Uh, I think you just dated me no? when you read the profile. But, but sorry, I'm sorry. sorry. <laughs> maraming salamat, uh, Rodmark. Maraming salamat for, you know, you and Mahan are the true rock stars of this budding sector, at all social enterprise sector. And uh, we really appreciate your support and, and your continued uh, dedication uh, for, for our community. Uh, thank you also. Uh, to, uh, thank you very much, Prof. Jay, no? uh, also for your continued guidance and inspiration. Uh, Ang haba rin ng profile mo kanina, but like what I told you, for me, you are really my ambassador of fun. And you bring fun and, and excitement uh, to this advocacy of ours to uplift uh, social uh, enterprises. To all our guests, uh, social entrepreneurs, educators, representatives from non-government organizations uh, and government agencies, and even the private sector, Maraming salamat for joining us on the first day of the 2023 Philippine Social Entrepreneurship Summit. As Carlos Sagun of Bayan Innovation Group pointed out in one of our subsector sessions, social entrepreneurship, as the, as the term is commonly used today, has been gaining a lot of attention the past three decades. However, with the ineffectiveness and inefficiencies of development programs, Actors have taken the call to respond to social needs and wants through the delivery of market-driven products and services. And the fact that you are all here, meaning kayo po, all who have registered, all who are here with us, it only means that you have already decided to be part of the movement or have at least started to consider how you can become part of it. At BPI po, we aspire for a better Philippines, no? one that is sustainable and financially inclusive. Through BPI Foundation, we run social development programs that is aligned and supportive 
of that vision. One of these programs is the BPI CNUG. Now on its ninth year of nurturing and empowering Filipino social entrepreneurs. While it was initially conceived as a business challenge, as mentioned earlier by Prof. J, it has recently evolved into a growing ecosystem of entrepreneurs, academe, and interveners who share common goals of inclusive and sustainable growth and development through social entrepreneurship. In 2021, together with the Bayan Group, we published How to Manage a Business That Does Good. It is a guidebook for social enterprises and entrepreneurs to deepen their business and social impact. In my message back then, I said that everybody can be change makers. We can teach and learn skills that help us make more effective and lasting changes. And to reiterate, doing well by doing good as an economic and social imperative has become more relevant now more than ever. Now is the perfect time to increase our efforts to become more responsible and sustainable when doing business for the sake of millions of underserved and unserved Filipinos in terms of financial wellness and inclusion as defined by the Banco Central of the Philippines or BSP. And not to mention the millions who are uh, still recovering from the massive setbacks caused by this pandemic. The summit theme is very clear. Isang adikain, expanding horizons. Now is the perfect time to expand horizons for our shared aspiration of contributing to the national development and building a better Philippines through a more responsible and sustainable business model, that is social entrepreneurship. The journey started with a roadmap with its governance system in place that will be formalized in this summit, the collaboration started will be sustained, expanded, and evolved. Together with all of you here, we are thrilled and excited on the outputs of this summit. Let's, let's shift mindset and behavior towards doing good and making changes that truly matters. Thank you once again, and magandang sinag, everyone. Maraming salamat, Sir Owen, for that message. Uh, as you said, nga, um, this is such a huge venture to undertake. And we are very, very fortunate that BPI Foundation is leading the way in trying to bring the entire social enterprise sector together. So thank you again, Sir Owen. Our theme for the summit is Isang Adhikain, Expanding Horizons. This covers the process of movement towards a common goal, national growth and development via innovation and social entrepreneurship. Without movement, without initiative, there would be no horizon and zero possibility. The last summit introduced the National Social Enterprise Development Roadmap. This year, we will be deepening that initiative, exploring the different subsectors that make up the social entrepreneurship ecosystem. Because of the pecul peculiar state of the Philippine social enterprise sector, multiple subsectors were mobilized for the National Social Enterprise Development Roadmap, such as the MSMEs, associations, cooperatives, NGOs, corporations, and the academe. Even while putting forward the distinct DNA of their subsectors, all have taken on one purpose. To unite in the advocacy of growing the scope, size, and social environmental impact of the Philippine social enterprises. Tulad nga nang nangyayari sa BPIC na no? It's not just about the social enterprises na lang, no? but it's about every sector that can affect every actor, every actor that, can help. that can help and affect social enterprises. In furtherance of this advocacy, a nationwide governance system for implementing the roadmap was organized. At the national level, the National Governance Council, represented by all subsectors, will orchestrate a unified implementation of the roadmap strategies and action programs. 
This summit intends to give the roadmaps governance system leaders the platform to communicate what transpired in a series of subsector specific technical working groups wherein the organization functions and accountabilities of the governance system actors were thoroughly discussed. To give us an overview of the technical working groups that has happened since um, November, was it? September. Se September. No? To give us an overview of the technical working groups of the National Social Enterprise Development Roadmap, please welcome the Executive Director of the Bayan Innovation Group, Mr. Carlo Sabin. Hello, Carlo. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Thank you very Carlo. Much, man. Thank you very much, Maan and uh, Rod Mark, for that uh, brief introduction. Of course, thank you, uh, Prof. Jay, uh, for, me, for enabling the Bayan family of foundations to become a key contributor to this nationwide advocacy. Of course, uh, thank you to BPI Foundation and, of course, the leadership of uh, Mr. Owen Camayo. It was uh, for everyone's uh, benefit. It was under the leadership of uh, Mr. Camayo that uh, BPI Foundation really endeavored to democratize the successes that uh, they have been realizing through BPI Sinag. So when he took the executive directorship of BPI Foundation, uh, he actually agreed to the notion of uh, really creating a nationwide movement uh, because uh, he truly believes in the potential of social entrepreneurship and uh, what social enterprise development can really contribute to the country's overall development outcomes. So uh, Rodmark and uh, Maan uh, shared that I'll be providing some insights as regards the process that was done, as regards uh, the technical working group series, right, uh, that we actually delivered from September 2022 up until this month, February 2023, right? Uh, Rodmark and Maan were also key contributors to that. And uh, it, this would, would not have been possible without their contribution. And of course, uh, the Society for the Advancement of Professional Social Entrepreneurship's uh, contribution, right? So, uh, but uh, we have time. We have some time. It's just uh, 125. And uh, I have until around 2 p.m. to uh, talk about this process. And uh, since we have uh, some time, right, I'll, I, I'd like to add value. Right to the original intent of the short session, which just which is just to provide an overview of that TWG series, uh, to really contextualize the relevance of uh, what we're trying to formalize here, the national social enterprise governance system. I'd uh, like to divide uh, my presentation uh, this afternoon into four key segments. Right that I hope can uh, further the understanding of our summit's theme, Isang Adhikain, Expanding Horizons. Because the TWG series that we conducted uh, to really organize that governance system is just one factor to that. And uh, there are some uh, participants in the summit who will, be, who will be hearing about the roadmap for the first time, right? So uh, really, I, I'd like to contextualize this whole nationwide endeavor by giving a microcosm of uh, the current situation that we're faced with and the potential outcomes that we can collectively deliver if we work on this together, right? So a microcosm. So my first segment will be about that, right? And then the second segment will just be an overview of the National Social Enterprise Development Roadmap. Of course, uh, we hope to align everyone in the summit as regards the objective of really harnessing the collective efforts and uniting these efforts from different subsectors, from different stakeholders, such that we can all contribute strategically to this particular roadmap. So it's imperative for us to revisit uh, the, the salient points of the roadmap and uh, align everything that will happen in the next two days uh, with the roadmaps uh, salient points, right? And of course, after which, I'll be providing some updates on uh, what we have done to date as regards the key strategies of the national roadmap, right? And uh, organizing the governance system is actually 
relative to just one of the three key strategies, right? So that will be my last uh, part in the roadmap updates because that will transition us into the content of this particular summit, which is really formalizing the governance system and uh, sharing what uh, programs have already been aligned in, in as far as uh, the governance systems uh, operationalization is concerned, right? So those four segments, I'd like to walk you through them in the next uh, 20 minutes or so, because I'd like to uh, end by uh, 150, 155, to give everyone a chance to settle down in the next sessions, which will start by 2 p.m., right? So a microcosm of the situation and our shared purpose in this national endeavor, right? So I'd like to start with this. And uh, with this, I'd like to tell a story because I, I was doing this uh, presentation while I was actually on field, right? In the, in the past uh, three days, I was actually in Bicol, traveling from Legaspi, Bicol, uh, Bulusan Lake, all the way back to Legaspi uh, for a particular activity, for a particular project. And uh, it dawned on me that uh, the situation that was happening there and the outcomes that uh, we think we have achieved in, that partic in those particular three days is actually a microcosm of what we're trying to achieve on a nationwide scale. Right. So has anyone heard of the municipality of Aroroy? Right? Bayan ng Aroroy sa probinsya o lalawigan ng Masbate. Right? Uh, I understand that we have uh, hundreds in the room, uh, even uh, going through, going towards uh, a thousand and even more. Right? And uh, I would assume, uh, I'm just uh, using intuition here that a good majority of the participants in the room have yet to hear, have yet to go to Aroroy, or even have yet to hear about this uh, particular sleepish town in the province of Masbate, right? So it's right at the tip of Masbate province. It's in Region 5, right? And uh, when I first went there in 2017, it's a small municipality, right? But from its center, from its poblacion, right, you'd have to travel six hours to the other barangays in the municipality. So that gives you a picture of uh, the development uh, that uh, is in place in this particular municipality. But even so, it has natural wonders. It has a white sand uh, beach front that's uh, lengthier, that's longer than the beachfront of Boracay. And uh, when I went there, it was actually two hours boat ride away from the Poblacion. It was majestic, right? Uh, it, it seems like you're in another world altogether. And because it's not accessible, there's no one really uh, enjoying this God-given asset yet, right? And uh, even with these natural resources, Right. In year, years ago, uh, Aroroy was still classified as a fifth-class municipality. So in terms of revenue, it wasn't really earning much yet as a local government unit. But uh, because of the entrance of a particular industry, right, a gold mining industry, it suddenly became a first-class municipality, right? And uh, it's actually quite fortunate that uh, this particular mining company is a world-class gold mining company, right? The Masbate Gold Project, which is really a partnership between Filminera and uh, PGTRC. So it's a partnership between a couple of corporations to collectively uh, harness the resources of the area and uh, not just uh, share the benefits to the municipality, but uh, of course, uh, get value out of it, right? But uh, unlike other mining companies, uh, MGP, is, uh, I, I can say, is a really responsible mining company. It's, a, it's really world-class, right? And in furtherance of the objective of really having a long-term area development plan, because they know that the mining operations will stop somehow in the near future, they want to transition the municipality into something that's sustainable because the revenues from the mining company will cease to come, right? And uh, 
the main reason for the municipality of Aroroy being a first class municipality, right, will also cease, right? And the chances are, if they don't have this area development plan in place, they might go back to becoming a fifth class municipality. So it's part of Masbate Gold, Gold Project's CSR program, right? Uh, to really engage with the people's organization of this particular municipality. And uh, for this, they tapped us by an innovation group to deliver an introduction to sustainable area development planning for the different stakeholders in the municipality, particularly the people's organizations in their uh, marine protected areas. There are two. Uh, there's one in Colorado, a uh, marine protected area, and the uh, Bongsanglay Natural Park. So you can see to, to the left, that's the Colorado Marine Protected Area. And they've installed reef balls, right, to propagate the biodiversity in those particular waters. And you can see the richness of the mangrove forests in the Bongsanglay Natural Park. And uh, what, the picture to the right most, is actually 140 years old. It's uh, the second largest species of uh, mangroves here in the country, right? So it's uh, something that can be seen in the Bongsulay Natural Park. And for the People's Organization, the Protected Area Management Board, the Municipal Environmental and Natural Resources Office, the Provincial Environmental and Natural Resources Office, and even DNR Region 5, right? They put them all together uh, to get into a training, a three-day training entitled the Introduction to Sustainable Area Development Planning, right? Such that they can really go for the sustainability of this sleepish town, uh, the municipality of Aroroy, right? And... The day one of the training happened actually last Monday. So we flew in around 3 a.m. last Monday. And the first thing we did was uh, drive for two hours and 30 minutes to Bulusan Volcano Natural Park. And the reason for this is uh, Masbate Gold Project endeavored to bring all the stakeholders that are supposed to uh, push forward the sustainability and development of the protected areas in Aroroy right, to Bulusan Park, which is a model, a best practice in uh, protected area management, right? So when we arrived in Bulusan Volcano Natural Park, right, we parked, we, we, park, we were received in an ecotourism center, right? And from there, we were shuttled by an e-jeep of sorts. It's, it was like a longer golf cart, but it was electronically run. And uh, from the tourist, ecotourism center by the entrance, you can see the building here, that's the ecotourism center, right? From that particular entrance, it was a fairly five minute drive, right? With that Egypt, Egypt towards the first lake. So apparently there are around three lakes in the Bulusan Volcano Natural Park. And in those five minutes that we were in the Egypt, right? There was a tour operator, there was a tour guide who was telling us about the biodiversity, the ecosystem in the park, right? The history of the trees, the animals that uh, we can encounter. So it was very informative. And the, the ride itself was already an experience, right? So we went to the lake, right? And we just marveled at the beauty of the place. So you can see the picture to the right. And uh, quite frankly, I was uh, cramming my way through designing this particular training program last weekend, right? Because uh, as of the time, I, I really didn't know the profile of the participants yet. Were they going to be from the grassroots? Were they going to be from the leaders of the government agency? So uh, up until Monday, that was the only time that I was able really to rest when I saw the beauty of the place, right? And we were fortunate enough to be received by Veron Galienosa, right? Uh, she's really the lead of that ecotourism enterprise, that ecotourism endeavor. And she shared the entire experience of Bulusan Volcano Natural Park, right? Uh, they actually started through Agap Bulusan. It was an NGO that uh, started way back in 2011, right? And he shared the critical factors for success for such an ecotourism park, 
that uh, the people's organizations from Aroroy really want to emulate, right? So she shared partnerships were critical, partnerships with the LGU, with the province, with the different government agencies, Department of Tourism, DNR, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, right? Equally important, she said, was the multiple revenue sources that had to be put in place for the sustainability of the ecotourism park and also for the collective benefit of the people, the communities who actually reside around the park, right? So these multiple revenue sources uh, came from a canopy walkway, a cabana, a set of cabanas, right? A massage service, a restaurant service, a fisher folks association that provided the inputs to the restaurants, right? And uh, also brought uh, the guest through a kayaking experience and a boat riding experience. The different enforcers, right, that uh, needed to guard the entire ecology, right, the entire park, right? There, were also, there was also a tree nursery. They're actually into a program wherein we, they just planted one million trees, right? And they, the people actually benefited from that nursery and the, tree, the actual tree planting program. Right. So after all of these discussions by uh, Veron, right, right. So she actually mentioned that their ecotourism enterprise is actually a social enterprise, right? Agap Bulusan is actually a social enterprise, right? And uh, just so happens that Veron is actually an alumna of uh, the MESEDEV program, Tineo Graduate Schools, Graduate School of Business, uh, Master in Entre Entrepreneurship for Social Enterprise Development, right? So she knew how to really operate and lead a professional social enterprise, right? And so I built on that, right? It, it was at that point that I had clarity on how I would approach this cohort of participants that came from different organizations, from different levels, from different profiles, right? So I stood in front and I told them what Veron learned in, in 18 months in this master's course, the only master's course in social enterprise development. I'll give you in two days, right? By the time you get home after the two-day training, you'll have the same process of thinking as Veron's, you'll have the same mind frame, right, as regards approaching your parks, your protected areas, and developing your own people's organizations. And for the interveners, the government agencies at various levels, you'll have a better grasp on how to provide your interventions, right, to uh, the different people's organizations. So we went through days two and three of the training. We tackled systems thinking, social enterprise development, and strategic planning. So you can see the participants there, right? And towards the latter half of day two, right, we went through a visioning exercise, right? So they illustrated their deepest desires and dreams for their communities, right? So you can see here various drawings, but uh, there, there was a rural improvement club, a women's organization, right, who wanted to put up a restaurant, pretty much how the restaurant was put up in Bulusan Lake. They wanted to have a smokehouse, a processing area for smoked fish, uh, the produce from their husbands who are fishermen, fisher folks, right? Uh, this particular people's organization in Bongsang Lai Park, I wanted to establish a homestay enterprise and a catering enterprise, right? The national government agency, the regional office, understood, right, that they had to put together partnerships such that these enterprises can be put up effectively in, in the different protected areas of the region, right? And when they translated all of these illustrations into a statement, it all had the same tenor, right? So in this particular statement that uh, I believe captured everyone's, everyone else's statement's uh, uh, purpose, right? Or essence. Masaya at masaganang pamumuhay ng komunidad 
protektadong kalikasan at sustainableng paggamit ng likas na yaman. So sustainable and sufficient livelihood was there, right? At the same time, sustainability as regards the environmental resources was there. And this was a common vision among the different organizations from the grassroots people's organizations all the way to the national government agency's regional office. So a measurable end result is something that they also did. So for the people, for example, mabigyan ng masaganang pamumuhay ang mga tao. For the environment, maprotektahan ang coastal habitats ng uh, mga protected areas na walang illegal na activities and so on and so forth. Right? So in essence, after the two days, right, they understood right, the essence of how social enterprise development was a critical component of what they had to do to sustainably develop their areas. Right? So they understood how Veron of Bolusan Lake, a model practice, actually did it. Right? The, the particular approach to thinking through everything that they had to do. Right? These were people's organizations. These were fisher folks. These were cooperatives. Right? These were government agency officers. Right? They all came to a common understanding. Right? And so this case of Aroroy's integrated area development agenda, I, I, from my point of view, is really a microcosm of three realities. So in, in this particular case, I told you about Masbate Gold Project, a corporation with the CSR intent. Right? NGOs like Agap Bulusan and ourselves, Bayer Innovation Group, were involved. The academe, to some extent, was also involved. Uh, Ateneo Graduate School of Business professionally trained Veron, uh, which enabled her to become a model uh, best practice, right? Cooperatives, MSMEs and associations were all within the people's organizations, right? Uh, there were cooperatives there, there were associations there, and uh, both these groups put up MSMEs, right, micro enterprises in the form of restaurants, in the form of public markets, in the form of mini inns, right, or homestays, right. These were registered micro enterprises in the local government, right. And of course, the public agencies, the LGUs, the government agencies, right. As regards these stakeholders in this particular area, right. The first one, the first reality is that various sectors are actually for the philosophy of social enterprise development. That's why we all came together, right? We understood, at this point, there was no understanding yet, but they knew that the ends, right, that uh, a particular initiative could do, right, is something that they all had to work on, right? So in essence, that's the philosophy of uh, social enterprise development, that they had to do it sustainably, Right, and this was through a business. They had to, ad to, to address the different social issues in their communities through that business, and a good majority of the benefits, right, would accrue to the people, right, to the association members, to the cooperative members. The second one is that there is really low awareness of what social enterprises are in these sectors, right, and hence why they uh, were puzzled when Veron said that they were actually a social, it, it was actually a social enterprise that she's operating. But after the three-day engagement, right, after learning about social enterprise development, they all believed in its potential to deliver the envisioned integrated and sustainable development of their areas and communities, right? And this is just in Aroroy, a sleepish town in the province of Masbate. Right? Aurora is just a small part at the tip of Masbate. And imagine what three days could do in as far as social enterprise development is concerned. Right? And this particular roadmap that we have now is a nationwide endeavor, right? From Luzon to Mindanao. And imagine if three days could do that for a Roroy. What more if we do this consistently for five years, right? Imagine what we can do. So that brings me to this roadmap, right? And uh, for those who have yet to read the executive report, you can access it through the QR code or you can visit the link that's posted here. So it's uh, for us uh, to be aware of the salient points of the roadmap. But 
in essence, relative to that microcosm, which we also found out right, in our nationwide research that led to this code map, the vision that we're going for in this planning period is to have a common understanding of Filipino social enterprises as organizations that have a sustainable business model, pursue a social environmental mission towards the achievement of the SDGs, and ensure majority of their benefits accrue to the social environmental mission. The mission of the roadmap stakeholders is to unify the stakeholders right, in the pursuit of growing the scope, size, and social environmental impact of the social enterprise sector. The objectives are threefold for the general public to be aware of what social enterprises are, for interveners to have a common understanding of social enterprises and commit to the sector's development, and of course, for actual social enterprises to grow their scope, size, and social environmental impact, right? And for us to deliver those outcomes, there are three major strategies in the roadmap. The first one is to establish a sector-led governance system, right? Represented at the national level by sectoral authorities that will lead the roadmap's implementation throughout their subsectors. So the establishment, the formalization of that governance system is the main subject of this particular summit, right? Operationalize a sector-led social enterprise registry and accreditation system. Push for the recognition of Philippine social enterprises through policies, right? So uh, that's the general, th that's the gist of the roadmap. And what are the updates as regards to these strategies? For pushing for the recognition of Philippine social enterprises, right? Of course, there's the present bill that's currently in Congress. For If you want to know more about the present bill, uh, they actually have a virtual booth in, in the Hublo platform, so you can visit it for the details, right? So there are members of the Roadmaps Governance System who are actually members of the team actually pushing forward the present bill. So I hope you can learn about that too and support it, right? Local government unit policies are equally relevant and they're also being, being engaged at various levels. National government agencies are also being engaged at various levels. So I, the idea here is that the important policies are not just from the national legislature, it can be from local ordinances, it can be the recognition of different national agencies, right? So we have upcoming projects with DALG for the barangay level, with DSWD for the Sustainable Livelihood Program. There are stakeholders of the roadmap that have that, that, that would have a partnership with DOST Speechard, right? We are in deep involvement with TESDA in as far as their area-based uh, demand-driven program is concerned. And of course, there's an initiative by uh, various government governance system stakeholders to initiate an alignment with DTI as regards the recognition of social enterprises, right? So these are all critical as regards strategy three. For strategy two, for the social enterprise registry, more than just a registry, how will SEs benefit? That's something that we want to know before we actually mobilize registrants to this registry because we want the registrants to actually benefit from registering and not just uh, including, including them in a list. And we are in a continuous process of aligning with the requirements of impact investors such that social enterprises can readily be exposed to these impact investors, right? So we're aligning it with OECD. So for everyone's benefit, these, this is a global benchmark in as far as uh, uh, impact assessment is concerned, is in, a, in as far as monitoring is concerned. So that's something that we're integrating there. And of course, ILO's uh, frameworks as regards the social and solidarity economy, that's something that we're also integrating in this registry. For the accreditation system, SAPSE is uh, starting its talks already with PCNC, such that uh, moving forward, the accreditation system can be put up for professionalizing social enterprises, right? For the first strategy of establishing the sector-led governance system, right? As mentioned, we had a TWG series for organizing this governance system, and we conducted TWGs across the five subsectors from September to February. And uh, throughout this process, you were able to identify national level and area level representatives who would lead the roadmaps governance system, right? And uh, this particular structure will be explained further in the next sessions. 
right? But in essence, the governance system is represented by leaders of the different subsectors, corporations, cooperatives, NGOs, academe, and MSMEs or association and associations. And at the national level, there's a chairperson and a co-chairperson. And at the subsector level, right, there are area cluster lead institutions in North Luzon, NCR in South Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. So that's something that will be explained across the different sessions later on. But the co-secretariat who will provide technical assistance to the governance system would be SAPSE and BIG, right? So just to give a glimpse of uh, the leaders of the governance system, at the national level, you see the corporations, cooperatives, NGOs, academe, MSMEs, associations, all have big names, right? For the chairpersons, of course, Mr. Camayo, Father Pascual, for Father Anton for the cooperatives, Dr. Ben Quinones for the NGOs, uh, Professor Norby Salonga of uh, La Salle, the La Salle University, Professor Poe of Atibapa, right? For the co-chairpersons, Jinky Aguinaldo of Ayala Land, right? Dr. Kemi, who's also a part of the Philippine Cooperative Center Board, uh, Mr. Makasaet, who's the Executive Director of SF FSSI, and uh, Ms. Mary Grace Peña, uh, a leader of uh, ASCII Foundation, right? Eric Parilla, Vice President of Northwestern University, Joji Pantojas of Coffee for Peace, and Patch Dulay of the Spark Project. So they're leading the governance system at the national level, right? And I won't go through the different subsectors one by one, but just to provide you with a glimpse. So there are representatives for North Luzon, NCR, and South Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. For the cooperatives, for the academe, for the NGOs, for the MSMEs and associations, and of course, from the corporation subsector, which is being led by the Ayala Group of Companies for the first three years of the roadmaps implementation, right? So we started, when we started the roadmap, we were just four or five organizations, right? BPI Foundation, Bayan Academy, uh, Bayan Innovation Group, uh, Bayan Search, and SAPSE, right? But we are now at 70 organizations, all contributing to the roadmap's agenda. 70 sector authorities, all contributing to the roadmap's objectives, right? And you can see the current roadmap reach. This is the current reach, and we are just in year, year one, right? 70 organizations to start the governance system and its membership, all aligning their own initiatives to the roadmap's objectives. And discussions are already being done for a nationwide integration of key interventions, financing, capacity building, impact assessment, and knowledge sharing. Of course, for the benefit of the Filipino social enterprises. So what must you expect? Or what can you expect from the 2023 Philippine Social Entrepreneurship Summit? Right? First one is really to find out what the National Social Enterprise Governance Council is all about. So they're going to tell you about their composition and the programs that they have preliminarily identified to align with the roadmap's agenda, right? Learn more about the council members' relevant programs in furtherance of the roadmap, right? In day two, right, BPI CNAG, of course, will be highlighted, right? Their initiatives for social enterprises, for interveners, for educators, right? And uh, various courses, right? Different schools, universities, will tell you about their own experiences for developing curricula, for aligning their research agenda, and even their extension programs, their community extension programs, in as far as aligning these with social enterprise development, right? And uh, the cooperative sector will be presenting their own objective of building a cooperative economy, right? Enticing people, Filipinos, right, to join in this cooperative economy. And we can learn from how they've done it for more than a century. They're that big a sector for nothing, for, not for nothing, right? They have best practices that we can all adopt. The MESEDEV program will be presented tomorrow. And we have a special guest from Singapore, Race Singapore, who, right, we're, we're in current talks with, right, 
so that we can bring their impact investment program for the benefit of Filipino social enterprises nationwide. So that's something that you can learn about throughout the course of these two days. And last but not the least, get excited about the potential of the entire Philippines working together towards our shared development objective. Of course, through social entrepreneurship and social enterprise development, right? So with that, I'd like to end this particular session. I hope that uh, I gave justice in opening the different insightful sessions that you will go through. Again, enjoy the two days and uh, learn as much as you can, right? And uh, the next sessions will be starting in a few minutes. So I hope that uh, you can settle down in the sessions of your choice. We will be having four sessions today, two sessions at 2 p.m., another set of two sessions by 3.30, right? And then tomorrow, there's another program altogether for your benefit. So enjoy the two-day summit, and I hope that we can get you on board in this unification agenda such that we can commonly develop Filipino social enterprises. Thank you very much, everyone.